This is the video for Simplex Tableau displayed with decimal point. Over here we see the routine that displays it and over here we see the tableaus being displayed. Here's the initial tableau, tableau 1, tableau 2, and tableau 3. There are seven columns and four rows. Here in the initial tableau it says that item 1 needs 9 of part 1, item 2 needs 4 of part 1, item 3 needs 4 of part 1, and then it comes to part 2, says item 1 needs 2, item 2 needs 8, item 3 needs 7, and so forth. After it shows the requirements it then shows the slack variables where there's an identity matrix. That is variable 4 has a 1 here, 5 has a 1 here, and 6 has a 1 here. Those are the slack variables. And then in the last column there's the quantities and each one has a hundred. Then there's the fourth row. The fourth row has the prices of the items when it starts. The tableau 1 first tableau does. Price of item 1 is 8, item 2 is 5, item 3 is 5. The slack variables start out with zero value. Well, it has to decide which column to bring into the solution and it picks the highest marginal value. Well, it picked this 8. So it brought that one into the solution and here you see it has one in all zeros. All the values have been changed including the margin values. Now for the next transition the two margin values it sees are positive are both of these 1.444. So it picks the first one it found and then here the tableau 2 you see that one was brought into the solution. Then it checked the margins and said, oh, there's a margin value here that is still positive. I'm going to bring that column in the solution. And here you see it did. Put a 1 there. Now there are no longer any positive values. So the margin cannot be increased. There is no item variable that would do it or any slack variable that would do it. All right. So that's the tableaus. Over here is the routine that put the data on the screen. It starts out by moving the two values at XS into save XY. You got to understand that next to XS in memory is YS. So it's actually saving both of them into this string, string <laughs> this list called XY. The next thing it does, it fills the 12 characters at line with 124. 124 is a vertical bar and down here you see vertical bars. What they're going to tell it is when it prints out this text it's not going to print out 88 characters as it says here but it's only going to print it out until it finds the first vertical bar. And also because there's a vertical bar after that vertical bar it tells it don't advance the value of XS. See, normally when it prints text, it'll advance X out to the next position. But if you tell it not to, it won't. All right, that's for that. Well, we go back to be where we were. Set KG to zero. That's going to be used as an offset. And each time it goes around this outer loop, we'll call it, it's going to add LS to it, which is the offset to get to the next row. In this case, LS is 30. Even though there, we are only showing seven columns, actually th there could be 30 of them because it skips 30 positions before it goes to the next row. So we're going to go around each row here for IG of 1 to the number of rows, which is 4. Each time we're going to set LG equal to the offset of the beginning of that row and we're going to set our X value to the X value that we originally had here. We're putting it back over here to the left 
where the rows start. Then we say for JG of 1 down to MS, and MS is the number of columns in this time, which is 7. The first thing it does is it gets its next show value, which we have at offset LG, which was KG, which was 0. So it's here. It sets V equal to that first value. Then it adds 1 to LG. So the next time it'll be this one, then it'll be this one, and it'll go through all of them. And then all of a sudden it will jump by 30 and be at this one. As KG will change by 30, and then LG will be set equal to it. Well, we get that value. Then we add 1 to LG, so we'll point to the next column. And then we do a number of that into line. And it says here, use eight positions and show four of them as decimal points. But right above there, we moved, multiplied it by 10,000. So these decimal places that we're going to show here are only true because we multiplied it by 10,000. The numD line doesn't know how many decimal places there are. It's not going to show any. You're going to have to make them. And in order to do that, we had to multiply it by 10,000 and then say, but put the decimal point in four places. So it's going to take the value it got, VG, put it in line, and here it's going to make it 8.9431, even though the value that was in VG because it was multiplied by 10,000 was 8.9431. But it got a fourth decimal place of four places. All right, once it does that, it puts that text on the screen. Then it adds plus x to the x position. So it would be here, then it's here, then it's here, then it's here. Then it does that, as we say, for every one of the columns. Then when it's done doing the columns, it increase, increases kg by that value of 30, so it will point to the next row. And it changes ys by the number of pixels between the, between the rows. It drops down and it drops down, it drops down every time. It goes to another row. Then it increases ig until it gets to the last row, which is the fourth row. Then it moves the save values of x and y back to x and y. Therefore, this routine does not change the values of x and y because it saved them and it returned them back again. So any other routine that has to know the position of x for this tableau will get the right value. All right, this is the end of the simplex tableau display with decimal point video.